Britain hits back over vaccine is what it says in the Times. Regulator stands by COVID jab approval. There was a bit of a sort of wobble yesterday, wasn't there, uh, when the American version of our chief medical officer basically came out and said that he gave the impression anyway uh, that working too quickly to find a vaccine that was going to be given out and rolled out uh, for the first people in the world to get it uh, was not exactly the best way of making people feel confident that enough research and enough testing had been done before that happened. They're very certain in this country that that has been the case, that they have spent enough time because they've been doing, um, you know, trials alongside one another instead of waiting months in between them. And that's how come things have come out so quickly. But a lot of people have a lot of questions. And let's talk to Professor Carol Sikora, now former head of the World Health Organization Cancer Programme, Dean of Medicine at the University of Buckingham. Carol, a very good morning to you. Welcome. Morning, Mike. Morning. Thanks, thanks very much indeed for joining us. I mean, I think a lot of the questions that people have are quite legitimate. Um, I think the government has to be careful not to be too kind of, um, shall we say, overbearing uh, in telling everyone what they must do and why they must do it, because I think that causes people to be even more sort of, uh, I would say, kind of restrictive about their own behaviours and what they would like to do. But shall we start with with questions um, to you, if you don't mind? I don't know whether you'll be able to answer them. Um, but I've got this one um, from Samantha, who says, could you please ask Professor Carol Sikori what is actually in the vaccine? Nobody seems to be discussing this. And I don't think it's an unreasonable request. Because, of course, no, no one in the government's told us yet. <laughs> it's a very reasonable request. What's in the bottle? You can see yeah. the little It'll have about half a millimetre, half a, uh, a, a cubic centimetre of fluid in there, and it'll be drawn in a syringe and put into your arm. And if it's the Pfizer vaccine, what's in the bottle? Well, the most important thing is the message in the bottle. The message being the RNA, which encodes the spike protein. We all know what spike proteins look like. You, you know the, the, the virus, the children draw the virus at school, and those little bobbles are the spike proteins. Mm. So what the RNA does is trick our own body, our own muscle, if it's jacked into a muscle, to produce little fragments of spike protein. And we do the production. There's no, there's no virus, no viral products in uh, the, the, the vial of a vaccine, but it, it makes our own muscle cells produce the protein that in turn stimulates our immune system, and that in turn produces antibodies and T cells and protection. Yes. And that's the secret. Now, I spoke to a doctor the other day about this, and he said that if you had already had the uh, coronavirus, you should probably still take the vaccine anyway. But surely if you've had the coronavirus, you've got those antibodies anyway, don't you? You have, but it, it's, we don't really know enough about how long things last in terms of immunity. And that's the big question mark over the vaccine. The vaccine's only been in clinical trial three months. So there's no way you know how long it's going to last for. You have to go on for a year, two years, three years to see how long the protection is. The sort of assumption that everyone's working to is that it's going to be like the flu vaccine. It's not going to be forever. Mm. If you take tetanus, one shot of tetanus, and that's it for 10 years. But this is different. This is not a, a very powerful stimulant of the immune system, and you probably need to renew it time and time every year, just like we do for flu. So us oldies uh, get rolled out, get a letter every year, and told, go and have your flu jab. Uh, I've, I've been to have mine. And uh, it's slightly different every year because they try and catch up with the mutant flu Viral influenza viruses around, but also you need to boost the system because you gradually lose immunity. Right. So this this type of vaccine, then, uh, Carol, is this quite an unusual type of vaccine, and which doesn't actually give you a bit of the disease? Because I always tell people, I remember getting a cholera injection once when I had to go to India many years ago, and I spent a very horrible afternoon sweating and sort of, you know, thinking I was going to die because they'd basically given me cholera, and that was how it felt. But for this, it won't be like that. It shouldn't be like that. This is really new technology. It's RNA technology. And, you know, the side effects that have been reported from the trials, and it's, it's been into 45,000 people. So, I mean, it's not, uh, well, it's to half of 45,000 people. And a bit of pain at the site of the injection, a bit of fever sometimes, general bit of grogginess for 24 hours, and then you're fine. In some people, you don't even notice. And different people react differently to all sorts of vaccines. Yes. Because most people, when they get a flu vaccine, will feel a bit fluey, won't they? They do. And, uh, you know, it, it, the best thing to do is just take it easy, watch television, lie down. Don't try going jogging or things like that. That makes it 
like doing, doing or playing squash or, or drinking large amounts of beer. That's probably not a good thing. No, quite. Now, a couple of other things that have come to my attention have been, to me, um, unhelpful, if you like, from the point of view of the government's uh, position. First of all, they say it's it's not something that will stop you getting COVID-19, but it will stop you getting very sick with COVID-19. It's also not something that will stop you spreading COVID-19. And it's also now apparently not something which will stop you self-isolating if you get COVID-19. And we've been told by this government right up to, to the recent week that basically the vaccine is the answer to everything. The vaccine is going to allow us to get back to a normal way of living. But it doesn't sound like that with this particular one. Uh, it, we just don't know. That's the problem, Mike. We have no idea because it's not been there before. It's been really dramatically pushed through. Some would say, too, like Fauci in the United States is having a little dig at uh, the speed at which it's been rolled out in Britain, not Europe, but just Britain. Uh, and uh, what is amazing is that if it works, we'll then find out. Do people that are vaccinated have to isolate? I would suggest probably not in the end, mm. but we have to, to demonstrate that, that those that do pass by someone that's heavily infected and therefore definitely a positive contact under the, the program we have, what is going to happen to them if they've been vaccinated? Do they convert to a positive or, or not? Yeah. You need to know that. And you've, you've always been a, an advocate of the size of the viral load being quite important in terms of how sick people get. Does the vaccine have any ability to sort of um, alter that, if you like? Again, it's too early to say, but we think so. so. From some of the data that's been published, it does look as though not only does it prevent infection, but it also reduces the effect of that infection in terms of viral load and the clinical symptoms you get if you, if you get infected. Right. I'm under the impression as well that this particular um, in, uh, first sort of lot of the vaccine, which we, we are led to believe is already here and is being distributed, is only going to hospitals rather than going to care homes. Do you know about that? Uh, it, it's chaos. I can tell you, Mike, it is chaos. Is it? I'm just a meeting about it there's only half the number of vaccine vials have arrived and remember they've got to you've got to have double the amount for everybody they've yes. got to come back in four weeks or three weeks to get the second shot and then you're not immune for another week after that so right. it, it's a long process uh you know the idea was the care homes but then who's gonna actually do it in the care home Injecting vaccines is trivial. I mean, you can train a healthcare assistant within an hour to give an effective vaccination. You don't need to have health professionals. You do have to have health professionals standing by in case you get reactions. Mm. So you ideally want a nurse, a doctor to be in the area, but the actual administration is relatively trivial as a procedure. It's not a skilled procedure. Uh, so there's enough people ready to do it. The question is all the logistics about collecting the data, identifying the patient, making sure they are who they say they are, all this sort of thing. Is, 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 it, you know, it, it's so obvious, but it is time consuming. Yes. But, you know, we have a minister that's going to sort it out for us. I don't know what he's doing all day, but this is his problem. <laughs> Minister for Vaccinations. Yeah, well, this is the problem. I think part of the problem, and, and I don't blame um, the media for being this way, but the media is so focused on coronavirus that literally every single second of every single day, there's another question about it. And there's more scrutiny probably on this than there's ever been on anything in the history of the world. You know, so now when you get people asking questions like, for example, how does it affect your fertility? It's not just one question. It's like, well, how does it protect male fertility? How does it how does it affect female? Female fertility should you take it when you're pregnant should you take it if you're planning to be pregnant should you take it if you might want to be pregnant in five years you know there's a there's a whole myriad of questions and the only way we'll get the answers to those mike is to wait and then we'll collect all the data when we, and that that's important surveillance is really going to be important of those people that have it because we want to know we want to know all the side effects from the trivial short term bit of fever immediately after a bit of tiredness to longer term mm. and obviously it's the long term that really are the important ones and you know we've seen this before the last round of flu vaccination the glaxo smith klein in, in 2010 led to a legal action which was settled for 60 million pounds for people getting sleepy after being given the injection so and that was only found many years afterwards and, mm. and very rare very rare 
effect, but definitely connected. So we have to identify all these things. And well, given what you're saying, Professor, would it have been wiser for the government to have been slightly less enthusiastic about this the other day, uh, rather than them sort of rah rah banging the drum and saying we've beaten the world? Look at what we've done. We've got the first vaccine. It's going to be great. Because as we've deconstructed it in the last two or three days. It hasn't seemed quite as great as it did uh, at first glance. <laughs> I, I think you're right. And, you know, what's going to happen on Tuesday, I gather, one of the plans is at seven o'clock in the morning, all four countries of Britain will simultaneously have someone on camera being injected. Hmm. Um, this is just PR stunts for politicians. They have no clinical value whatsoever. No. Uh, Do you think they're drawing straws for it as we speak? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And who's going to be on telly first? Right. You know? Will it, will it be Mr. Trump? Will it be Joe Biden? You know, who who knows how it's all going to play yeah. out? Yeah, no, I know. It's, it's interesting. And what about the other question that has come up for me a couple of times from people who are vegans? Is there anything in the in the, the, the vaccine which would prevent a vegan from having it? Uh, I guess there could be a bit of protein in the albumin from a serum of the, in which cells are grown. Although the RNA vaccine is likely to be much cleaner because it's just pure RNA and it doesn't need the protein around it except to stabilize it. But it's a tiny amount. It's like, you know, almost trivial. The sort you get in a you know, bottle of tomato sauce mm. is a little bit of protein there, even though vegans take it with a little bit of, uh, it's not animal protein, but uh, proteins are coming mainly from animals. Yeah. And I, I guess the other, the other problem uh, for it is abnormal reactions. People do have funny reactions to everything. And, you know, my, one of my grandchildren is so allergic to everything. You go into a room with a strawberry and he comes out in spots. Mm. Uh, and so people do have very stimulated immune systems. It may do them well if they get coronavirus, but it, it may be a nuisance when they get the, the vaccine. Yes. So, and that's, that's and that's I mean that's another question, uh, isn't it, about children and how low down through the age ranges do you yeah. go with this vaccine? And I'm I'm also fully aware of the fact that most of these questions will not even need to really be addressed for quite some time because by the time relatively young and fit people get the vaccine or are offered the vaccine, we're probably going to be talking nine months to ten months away, aren't we? Yeah, I think so, and I think. You know, once we get going, everyone will calm down. I'm looking forward to reading a newspaper that isn't wall-to-wall -wall corona, mm -hmm. uh, you know. Uh, and I'm sure you're looking forward to talking about it as well, other things, because it's... Uh, and we'll just have to get the vaccine story over. That's next week news. See the Oxford vaccine come. It's a pity that uh, they won they've lost the boat race here to the Americans, but uh, they may, in the long run, be a much more powerful one, especially internationally, where supply chain are a major issue and in terms of cold chain across Africa. And so yeah. So sort of one will win out internationally every time. Yeah, well, that is the other problem, isn't it? Because of the temperature at which it has to be stored. And as you say, the two week, uh, the two shot sort of a version of events. And, and so from what you've said, it would seem that from the first vaccination, you're not in, in any way vaccinated until you've had a week after the second one. Exactly. So that's uh, more than a month you have to wait. Uh, so there's no quick fix. There was a great film, I don't know if you saw it, <laughs> called Contagion. Yeah, I did see. It. I've, in fact, I've watched it several times since the beginning it's of fantastic. Uh, this whole thing. It's fantastic. It's such a predictive film. It's as though the guys could foresee the future. I know. If, if, if only the planners and the NHS could have foreseen the future as well, they'd have done well to yeah. look, look well, the other great, the other great movie I've watched a lot of is Outbreak as well, which is a bit older. Yes, it's a bit more Outbreak like it's a bit more like Ebola than it is about this. But Contagion yeah. is literally yeah. just about COVID, isn't it? it? And it's even called MSV or something like that. <laughs> yeah, well, and, don't say and, but, don't say it too loudly because people will see <laughs> say, well, this is how we know that it was all planned. Exactly. And th there they had some little ear nose swabs with the vaccine on. You put the nose swab up the you put the vaccine up the nose. Yeah. And the who were sick, they were really ill, would suddenly get up out of the ventilator and be cured just for the fact it doesn't work like that. No, you, of course. And let's prevent, talk, let's talk a little bit about the, the sort of the landscape at the moment as we, yeah. as we enter, uh, as I say, we're three weeks from Christmas Day, which seems almost impossible to believe that we're that close. But in terms of the way that the vaccine, se uh, the, the, the virus seems to be uh, at the moment, uh, the numbers seem to be going down. We've got some quite big numbers of reductions in terms of the number of infections. Are you encouraged by that? 
Absolutely. And the figure I look at, the single figure to look at is the number of daily hospital admissions. Yeah. And that's falling precipitously. The number of people that are tested positive depends how many you test, it depends which kit you use and all that sort of thing. So that's variable. The people on ventilators is secondary to the number of admissions. So the number of hospital admissions is, is on a downward curve. I mean, it was about 1,500 last week uh, a day. Uh, and this week it's down to 1,200, 1,100 yesterday. So uh, really coming down. And I hope by next week it'll be under 1,000 a day. And that means the NHS is coping really well. It can deal with my specialty, cancer and cardiac and all the other things uh, because it's not flooded and it's not going to be flooded. What Christmas does, we don't know. And that's, I guess, one of the reasons for trying to roll out the vaccine before Christmas mm. is just to try and get some partial protection before the inevitability where there's no way you can keep people apart at Christmas. Everyone can see that. No. At least that the politicians know that. And some will obey and some will be much looser with the rules. And we just have to put up with that. And then uh, somehow afterwards, uh, pick up the pieces and go back. But I don't think there'll be a, 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 a big big sort of increase immediately after Christmas. I think it'll it'll die a death then. Although from what you're saying about the timings of the two um, vaccinations that you have to have, if you have one, say, next week, the second one you have is not going to be till after Christmas anyway, so you're not going to be protected, no. as it were, through Christmas, are you? No, no, you won't get protection until 2021, even if you got it on Tuesday morning or one of these first right. people countries to get it so uh, i think that the, the the way forward is to continue doing what we're doing and to, to return to some sort of normality in terms of health care that's where we've got to go now is there any chance that this um, virus might be um, uh, transmitted in ways that we aren't at the moment aware for example in the food chain that, it's a, a good point but we don't think so and more likely is it with animals domestic pets yeah especially cats, dogs. We've heard little snippets about that over the last six months, but no good data, thank goodness, because you know what the solution would be if, they, if there was evidence mm. that it was spreading through dogs or cats. Right. And the solution wouldn't be palatable to society, I don't think. So, uh, not not in Britain, anyway. No. We love well, we saw so, a story, didn't we, earlier this week, I think, that Boris Johnson's dog supposedly got coronavirus. I don't know how true that was, but, um, you no. know, presumably, <laughs> presumably the dog survived. Yeah, I assume he's still around. And uh, I think, you know, it's interesting. Cats particularly have these RNA viruses, and some of them cause cancer in cats. It's a very bizarre model that's used by cancer researchers to study cancers in, in, in cats. Uh, so uh, there are all sorts of nuances to come. And, you know, we haven't heard the end of this. There's going to be a, a lot of... Uh, feedback from people that have been immunized and they'll have all sorts of stories to tell us as we go through the early part of 2021. Right. And what's your sense of how many uh, people will need to be vaccinated and by when uh, for us to kind of confidently say more or less that this, this, this disease has been eradicated to an extent? Obviously, we yeah. won't eradicate it completely, but, but you've always said that, that you believe that this, the virus is actually weakening and as time goes on, it gets weaker and weaker. It does. And not only that, significant number of people have already got immunity, even though they haven't been vaccinated, simply because they've had the virus. So mm. they're protected. The more people you protect, the less there is for the virus to infect. So I reckon if we could get 20 million people, that's a third of the population vaccinated, we'd be at herd immunity, taking into account the fact that some people have already had it, some people have had shared immunity to past coronaviruses, then you get the vaccine coming in. So 20 million sounds trivial, but it's not. It's a huge logistic exercise. Yes. And you have to do it twice and then to wait and to validate that the people have done it. They're going to have to produce an ID you know, it's it's not going to be an easy exercise. No, it has got to be a thought through in a massive way. And that's why I think the government maybe went a little bit early with this very much joyous kind of breakthrough type uh, press conference, which perhaps was a bit early uh, and a bit unwise. But Professor Carol Sakura, as ever, great to talk to you. Thank you very much indeed. Former head of the WHO Cancer Programme, Dean of Medicine at the University of Buckingham. We're told...
basically um, a lot of different things as ever uh, with the way that these things are rolled out the government were very very excited a few days ago saying that we'd made the big breakthrough that we were going to be the first country in the world to approve a vaccine however uh, as professor carl sakura just said it's going to be quite complicated to do all this right they need to vaccinate probably he reckons 20 million people in order to make it in some way effective however um it can it's going to be uh, a month between vaccinations and then the two that you need it's going to be another week after that before you then become protected and the protection doesn't stop you from getting coronavirus it just stops you from getting it badly which i suppose is something uh, it doesn't stop you giving it to anyone else it doesn't stop you uh, actually getting it so um you know it's not absolutely the sort of um, uh, the cure all that it was being sold as being and also by the time ordinary people who are not in hospital, who are not suffering and who are not in care homes and who are not vulnerable get it, it'll be quite a long way down the track.